podcast is on solid organs only. And um, the notes on solid organs are in this uh, base sheet that was given to you in a uh, lecture. And it's also posted on Moodle. So now when we talk about solid organs, there are a few issues that you need to understand. And then I'll give you some examples. So basically the tissues do not make distinctive layers as opposed to in tubular organs. So tissues do not make layers. Secondly, there's no central lumen running through them, no. And so it's just like cells piled on top of cells, supporting cells, okay? Then there are blood vessels, nerves, and lymphatic veins underneath the functioning cells. So if my hand is the functioning cells, this would be the supportive uh, layer of tissue that's underneath. And of course, we'll have terms for all this. And so as some examples of solid organs, they would be the liver, skin, kidney, bones, your heart. And you're probably saying, what, the heart? Yes, it's got a muscle septum down the middle. So blood goes in one out, in and out one side on both sides. And so basically, it doesn't go straight through. There's no lumen taking it from the right to the left. And a brain is another example. And of course, the meat that you eat, skeletal muscles are solid organs. And there's many more. So as we go through the various systems, we will be pointing out what kind of organ for each organ it is. And so your answer, if I ask on a lab test or a lecture test, what kind of organ is this? You have only two answers, tubular with a central lumen or a solid organ with no central lumen, okay? And the tissues do not make distinctive layers. Now, also on your note sheet right here, uh, we have some terms that we're gonna use with all solid organs. It doesn't matter what organ I'm talking about, we're always gonna use these terms for every solid organ. And there's gonna be six of them. So every solid organ will have a capsule around the outside, okay? And so the capsule is the outside boundary. It's gonna give it its shape, like a heart shape, like a kidney shape, like a bone shape. And so it's always made out of simple squamous and ET and dense break CT, always. And then the second term we're gonna have is septa. And septum is singular, but septa. And so these are dense reg CT supportive dividers in the inside of the organ that are gonna help hold it up and give it support. And then lobes, we have internal areas called lobes. And so the septa are actually gonna run in the inside and make lobes. And I'll show you that in my drawing. And then lobules are specific little areas inside a lobe, okay, inside a lobe. And so a lobule is a very little specific area. Not all organs have lobules, just a few. All right, and then here are the two big words that you will hear all the time in AMP 1 and 2. The first one is parenchyma, okay? Parenchyma, I usually call it the big P, capital P, the big P. What does that stand for? It's the dominant specific tissue doing the functions for the organ what it does. And so you gotta name what specific tissue dominates and does all the functions for the organ. And then number six, the stroma, or the big S is what I call it, the big S. It's the specific supporting tissue underneath, underneath, that's gonna feed the dominant cells. So this is gonna have blood vessels, lymphatic veins and capillaries, and nerves underneath controlling, controlling the dominant cells that are piled on top of it, okay? And so there's also a rule for the stroma. You always have to say what kind of capillary is in the stroma, okay? What kind of capillary will be in the stroma? And there's two kinds, and there's an actual podcast on blood vessels where we discuss capillaries. And so the two types of capillaries in stroma are gonna be called fen or non-fen. Non-fen or fen, okay? And so fenestrated means leaky and non-fen means not leaky. Not leaky, right there. 
And there's only two places, two places where you're going to find non-fins, okay? And so the two places you find non-fins are in all nerve tissue, all nerve tissue and the testes. The testes have non-fenestrated capillaries and sperm don't like to be leaked on, I guess. Neither do neurons. So you're, everything in the nervous tissue, uh, in the nerve, nervous system, is gonna have non-fenestrated and the testes, right. So ovaries, they have leaky ones. They have fenestrated capillaries because the ovaries are also a solid organ. All right, now there's two kinds of stroma that all solid organs will have. It's either gonna be loose CT or RCT, reticular connective tissue. RCT is only found in lymph nodes. And so we will only find RCT in our solid lymph nodes when we study the lymphatic system, which is in AMP2, right. But for right now, these are the two stromas. And so basically most all the organs, except for the lymph nodes, are gonna be loose CT fenestrated usually, but they could be non-fenestrated if they're in the nerve tissue, nervous system, or in the testes. Right now we're gonna go over the drawing of a typical solid organ. So I made it sort of liver shaped, a liver lobe shaped right here. And so around every solid organ, to give it its shape and overall support is the capsule up here. And the capsule is made out of the purple layer, always simple squamous and always dense regular underneath for support right there. So simple squamous dense reg equals the capsule that goes around the whole uh, organ right there. All right, then underneath the capsule and sometimes it, uh, usually under the dense reg, there could be fat pads, but fat is optional, okay, ACT. So it's not really part of the capsule itself. It can grow anywhere, remember? So there's just some ACT uh, because we will see slides um, with that, with some fat underneath it in capsules as we go through AMP uh, one and two. All right, now the dense regular CT from the capsule runs in like this. And so this orange layer, right here, here comes dense regular CT, and it makes the separators, the separators. And so I've got dense reg CT over on the other side. And what do we call this dense reg CT that comes in from the capsule? That's gonna be like a divider. We call that the septum. If there's just one, it's called a septum. But if there are many, they're called septa, okay? That's plural. Now, the septa, are dividers. They also are like little uh, uh, columns for support. And the septa can actually grow together, all right? So you can actually have this dense reg come over here and hook to this septa. So I've got one septa connecting there, and then I've got another septa connecting here. And so they grow together like that. And so when they grow together, then they're going to make lobes within the organ, lobes, because you've got a distinctive area here, you've got a distinctive area here, and right here. So this will then be called a lobe. This area will be a lobe. Then you can actually have inside a lobe, you can have the dense reg CT come out and make little specific areas in here, little specific areas like this inside a lobe right there. And so what do we call these little specific areas right here, right here, right here? These are called lobules, lobules. And so those are little specific areas within the big lobe right there. And so many of your solid organs have lobes to them, like the liver. Uh, eventually you'll, you'll know that they have four lobes. All right, so now we've got that taken care of. And then we have loose CT right here. Loose CT are the blue stars in the inside here. And the blue CT is called the stroma, okay? The stroma. And so what is the stroma? The stroma is the supportive specific tissue. 
and it's either going to be Lucy T or it's going to be RCT, which is in all your lymph nodes, okay, only. Um, so, and then fenestrated, FEN, stands for the type of capillary that's going to be present in the Lucy T or the RCT, okay. And so, this is the capillary type right here, all right. And so, this is going to be the supportive tissue, and in this Lucy T or RCT, you're going to find nerves coming in and coming out. And so those would be like afferent and efferent nerves, bringing electricity in and out to control everything. We have blood vessels coming in and going out, cardiovascular. And so we have red for arteries, and they're going to bring in oxygen, food, and hormones, okay? And then um, this is the capillary, the connector uh, between the artery and the vein. And then you do all the exchanging of everything at the capillary level. So all the good stuff's going to come out. The oxygen, the food, the hormones is going to come out. And into the capillary is going to go all the nasty stuff. So then all the C CO2 is going to move in and the waste will go into the capillary. So it will get loaded and then taken out via the vein. So your capillaries are actually the smallest arteries in the human body, right? And they do all the exchange of everything, okay? All right, what else do we have? We've also got this green tube. This green tube that's gonna come in, and the green tube is actually called a lymphatic vein. A lymphatic vein comes in and becomes a lymphatic capillary right there. And so what's gonna happen is this little capillary right here, lymphatic capillary, it's going to collect leaked plasma. And so when you leak plasma out of your cardiovascular one, not all of it goes back into the CV capillary. And so the leftovers can go into the lymphatic capillary. And then it will take this and send it back into your cardiovascular system. And so we'll be talking about that next semester in 142 when you understand where all your lymphatic veins dump back into a cardiovascular um, vein. All right, so lymphatic veins will collect leaked cardiovascular plasma. So all of this is found in the stroma, okay? The nerves, the blood vessels, the lymphatic veins, and so that's all associated with the stroma as is really the fat, the ACT. Now the last structure that we need to know about and probably the most important is the term parenchyma. Parenchyma and so it's the big P and so the parenchyma is going to be parenchyma, the big P right here. This is going to be the specific tissue that does the functions for the organ. Specific tissues that does the functions for this organ, for the organ, okay? And so it will change with what kind of organ we're talking about. So sitting on top of this blue CT right here, I'm just gonna put some purple cells right here in the liver. And so these are all simple cube ET cells sitting on top of all of this, on top of this. And so the stroma's underneath like a trampoline. And so here are my, and this makes my picture really messy and terrible, but basically here are my simple cube ET cells right here. And so for the liver, since this is a piece of liver, my parenchyma for the liver is going to be simple cube ET cells. Simple cube ET cells, and they do 500 plus functions for you in the digestive system. Don't worry, we're not going to learn all 500, but I'm just saying. And so right there, these sit on top of the trampoline, and the trampoline is what I call the stroma, right? It's going to be underneath with all the BBs, the nerves, and the lymphatics, correct, and some fat, with some fat. 
So now, to help you understand this, I made something, okay? I made something. So here is a homemade version of a solid organ, sort of like the liver on the board. So using the terms I used in my picture, on the outside I have purple, and so purple's gonna go all the way around, and that's the posquamous. Then I have pink underneath, dense break CT. So what did I just make that's gonna make the outside boundary and hold the whole organ together? That is gonna be the capsule, all right? So I just made the capsule, and then I have pink running in, dense regular CT running in from the capsule, and these are the dividers, the dividers or columns for support. So what do we call this? If there's just one, it's called a septum. If there's many, there's septa, septa, and then they can actually grow together and make lobes, lobes within an organ. Do they always have to grow together? No. And do all solid organs have um, septa? No. And so some you can see, some you can't. So no big deal. So now what is all this white tissue in the back that's going to have the nerves and the blood vessels in it? Basically that is loose CT. Loose CT. And so loose CT is going to be the supportive tissue and then all these things run in between the loose CT cells and their matrix. And so we've got blood vessels, we have arteries bringing oxygen, uh, food and hormones in. Capillaries will turn it around and exchange everything. And then the veins, cardiovascular veins come out and they're always coated blue. And then we have yellow going in and out. And these are lymphatic veins and capillaries and they're gonna pick up leaked plasma from the cardiovascular um, capillaries. And then we have nerves I made as gold um, pipe cleaners right here. And so these are afferent and efferent coming in and out. Um, nerves that are gonna control the blood vessels, gonna control the loose CT cells, and just in general, everything. So all of this, the loose CT, the septa uh, in here, the BBs, lymphatics, and the nerves, all of this is the supportive network, the supportive term called the stroma, the stroma. So it's loose CT with a certain kind of capillary, which is either fenestrated or non-fenestrated. All right, so now what else can the stroma be? If this is loose CT, it can also be in lymph nodes only, RCT, okay? Fenestrated, um, basically leaky, the leaky kind. All right, so this is what I also call the stroma. Think of it like a trampoline. A lot of times it's underneath and you can't see it on a slide, but you still have to know it's there because it's feeding and controlling the cells sitting on top of it. So if this is the liver, then I'm gonna pile on top of my stroma right here. I'm going to pile the parenchyma cells. And so these are the simple QBT cells in the liver, and they're gonna do over 500 functions. And so how, how are they fed and controlled? By underneath, by the nerves and the blood vessels underneath. And so these, this specific tissue, simple QBT, is called the parenchyma of this organ, the big P, right? And so the big P stands for what specific tissue does the functions for this specific organ, right? And so this is the important type of tissue that's gonna sit on top of um, my stroma. All right, now, if this is the liver and simple cube, say if I did said this was skeletal muscle, okay? And so here's some skeletal muscle cells, okay? Nice and long pipe cleaners. And so basically, do they have a capsule around them? Sure they do. We called it epimyceum when we learned uh, muscle tissue. And so then the septa would be like perimyceum. It would run in between my muscle cells. And then what's gonna be the endomyceum? The loose CT. So we can actually rename things depending upon what organ we're talking about. So that's just the way anatomy um, does things right there. But it's the exact same thing, just different names. All right, so now if I was saying this is, say, neurons, okay, neurons right here, nerve tissue. So here it is right there. And so 
This would be the parenchyma, the neurons of the brain or spinal cord. And then the loose CT would be non-fenestrated because it doesn't like neurons to be leaked on with all the good oxygen, food, hormones, etc. So it changes, the parenchyma changes depending upon what solid organ we're talking about. So that's the summary of how we build solid organs.